With every revision, this thing just keeps getting better and better. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. If you've been following along on the VGC radio series, you'll probably know that one of my first videos, I complained about this radio not working with WinLink. It worked great with APRS, APRS Droid over Bluetooth, but I could not get it to work with WinLink over Bluetooth. Well, since then, another new firmware version has come out. And guys, I think it's only been like two weeks since I shot that first video. But this new firmware version allows the VGC radio to definitely work with WinLink. Now, I've tested this with WinLink on Android or Wode. I've tested this with Radio Mail. And I've tested this with Linux, and all three of them work perfectly. I'm sure this is going to work fine for you Windows guys as well. But today, what I want to show you is how to get that radio configured for Linux and working with WinLink. So let's go ahead and jump over to the laptop and check this out. All right, so the first thing you want to do on the radio itself, make sure you're running the very latest firmware from VGC. I'm going to use the green button to get into the menu system, and I'm going to come down to general settings. I'll use the green button again to uh, select that, and then we're going to come down here. We want to go to KISS TNC, make sure that that is enabled, and then we need to go to the digital mode and make sure that this is disabled. Digital mode is for your APRS. That's not what we're using right now, so we want that disabled. We will leave, though, the uh, KISS TNC enabled. Then go ahead and make sure that you select the channel for the gateway that you want to connect to. In this case, I'll be using 145050. And finally, what we need to do is put the radio in pairing mode before we look for its MAC address on the Linux box. So let's go into the menu one more time. Let's use the up arrow twice to get to the pairing uh, option. Let's use the green button to go ahead and select that. You'll also notice that we get a green and red flashing light on top of the radio. Now, on the Linux box, we'll come back to this in a minute. We're going to do this right now in the terminal. Let's type HCI tool space scan. Go ahead and press return and give this just a couple of minutes. This is going to scan and look for the MAC address for this particular radio. Once the scan is done, you'll see that MAC address right here, and it is for the VRN76, which is the radio that we're working with. Now that we know this information, I'm going to go ahead and paste in my next command. What this is, is we do have to run this with sudo, so super user privileges here. We're using the rfcom uh, command. We're telling it to connect. We're telling it forward slash dev forward slash rfcom zero. That's the connection point that we want to create. And then we're giving it the MAC address followed by a space and a one. The one is for the Bluetooth channel out there. So we're telling this command will take this MAC address on this channel and connect it to the system at forward slash dev forward slash RFCOM zero. Let's go ahead and press return on the keyboard. It is going to ask me for my password and you will see that I got a permission denied. Now, I've run into this quite a few times. Uh, the way I have found to get around this is to go ahead and turn the radio completely off, turn the radio back on, and we'll give it just a little bit of volume, and then I'm going to repair that, or turn the pairing back on for that radio. Now, Let's run that same command again, and this time we should have success with this command. So if you run into an issue and you get this permission denied, just cut the radio off, back on, and then put it back into pairing mode. I'm not exactly sure what's causing this. I've never seen this on another Bluetooth device, but it's something uh, just a little odd with the VGC radio. 
However, it makes absolutely no difference in the way it functions, just makes it a little bit more aggravating to get it connected. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and press Control shift t on my keyboard. That's gonna open up a second terminal window. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to paste in this following command. Uh, again, we've gotta use sudo here, kiss attach forward slash dev rfcom zero, and then WL2K. Now, just for those that might not be running 7.3 Linux, let me show you where it's getting this WL2K or why we're using this WL2K uh, port. So I'm going to open up yet another terminal window, and this is only so I don't lose this command right here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to CD forward slash uh, etc forward slash ax25. I'm going to list that out and you'll see that we have a file right here called ax ports. Uh, now if you're running 7.3 Linux this is set up for you by default. You won't have to worry about this but if you happen not to be running 7.3 Linux I'm going to cat out that ax ports file so that we can see what's in it and you'll see right here that we've got this line. This defines our AX25 port. The port name is WL2K. You'll see my call sign right here, and then this other information out here to the right. Again, running 7.3 Linux, you don't have to worry about this, but if you're not, you might need to uh, define this if you don't already have it defined. If you do have it defined, you need to know what your AX25 port number is. So let's kill that particular window. Let's go back over here and we're going to go ahead and execute this command. You'll notice it gives us an AX25 port WL2K bound to device AX0. So we're good up to this point. Now we have one more command that we do need to issue. Uh, and I can't give you all the specifics on this. This is just one of those, I guess you can call it tribal knowledge. Uh, this is just one of those things that you definitely want to use with these Bluetooth ports to keep the timing and everything correct. You can dig into it a little bit more if you want to know exactly what this is. But it's sudo space kiss params space hyphen C space one space hyphen P, which is our port WL2K. Let's go ahead and press return there. It just takes us right back to the command line and gives us no indication of anything, uh, that anything actually happened. Now, I'm going to pull down a browser window. I'm watching some weather that's rolling through this morning, but I'm gonna come right over here to my PAT window. Now, one thing real quick that I do wanna show you, let's jump back to the radio for just a second. Notice right up here in the top corner, our uh, top line of that, you see that little phone looking icon? That little phone looking icon right there on the very far right uh, of this group of icons, just to the right of the mute button, that tells us that we have a Bluetooth connection from the radio to the computer. Now, I can't make the connection with the radio laying down, so I'm gonna take that and stand it up. Let's go ahead and jump back to Pat and let's try to make that connection. So I'm telling it AX25 plus Linux right here, and I have set my target. Now in Pat Winlink, we do not get rig control for this particular radio, so I'm not dialing in a frequency. I have to punch that in manually. Let's go ahead and try to connect, and we should hear that connection happening. I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit. And you can see that we did make a connection down here. Now, if all of that's a little bit more than you want to contend with, I am working on this new app called N76 Connect. I will be releasing this to patrons uh, in the coming weeks. This makes it super easy to get it working either with Winlink or Yak. I'm going to go ahead and reset the radio real fast by turning it off and back on. I'm gonna go ahead and put the radio back in pairing mode. And then we're just going to click WinLink right here. It's gonna tell you to be sure that the Bluetooth and TNC is enabled. We'll go ahead and press OK. On the radio, you'll notice that we got that little icon again, showing us that everything is connected like we expect. Let's go ahead and go back to the PAT 
mailbox and let's try that connection one more time let me put the radio up so that uh, it has a uh, antenna in the right orientation and we're going to try that connection one more time And you'll see that we just went through a full connection and got a disconnect. Guys, it's that easy. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.